We got asked by USM to uh, do a cultural project for the occasion of the anniversary, the 50th anniversary of the USM Halle Furniture. It's a long-term project if you want to. It started with a workshop in Bobuchet last year in September and uh, we worked with a lot of people, so seven designers and architects and um, their students. And we expected all the positions we saw already in Bobuchet, but um, to see the exhibition now is, is really amazing. We're in a, a location called the Domaine de Boisboucher, and this is an extraordinary site. It's huge. Um, there are many buildings here, many um, installations created by people who have come previously and done workshops with students, and the outcome is an interesting structure which is out in the landscape. So for a designer, who comes here now to attend any workshop whatsoever on, on any subject, just the place itself is enormously exciting and stimulating. For the USM Masterclasses, we invited seven designers to have a workshop here with the students to explore the uh, theme modularity in a very general way. Approach. Those seven lecturers come from the fields of uh, design, architecture, arts and fashion design. Well, I've heard this theme of uh, rethink the modularity. I directly thought of a mighty people of this interaction because modularity for me, it's a direct link with interaction. Well, it's more the whole installation that is modular because we have like one whole installation with four modules which are connected uh, to each other with um, thanks to interaction design. We started working inspecting the serving trees and nature and uh, trying to identify modular principle in nature and we developed from this observation different uh, possible structures and the outcome uh, in the end is a proposal for a, a monument to modular thinking. Uh, the theme of, the, of this initiative is Rethink the Mother, so it's very much about thinking outside of the box, outside of the square, uh, looking into the future and getting new ideas. To have students from different countries, different cultures, we're doing actually the same subject, and I think we were not disappointed. The, the results are really very diverse and uh, very different in thinking, so that's that is really quite striking to me. As we have access to these workshops and we have all the skills and all the people and uh, it would be nice if, uh, if this workshop would be very much yeah, uh, focused on the making and just uh, thinking by doing. So really making uh, lots of spit models, putting them on the table, trying to connect them, see what works, what doesn't work and refine, 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 refine. Every student had to make a project on this grid and then exchange one part of, of his project with another project. So it makes several objects that has part from different people and uh, it's like a chain of different objects. The approach is fascinating to allow students to explore with impractical experience new ways of thinking modular in our life, in our society and in our everyday world of objects. Our point of departure for the project is the book as the module um, and we've taken it, we've approached it from a lot of different directions. We would have a grid of holes and a series of rods going into those holes and the book itself can act as a shelf. Um, to start to sort of build your library physically with your library. Those kind of things break tradition, break the way we're familiar with, therefore they are, 
help us to rethink our own self. So you're talking about rethinking the module. This is about rethinking teaching, rethinking learning. That's very important, I think, in this workshop. The impulse comes from each module. We don't intend to create a working method, but to enable a mental workout that sensitizes the worker for their own profound needs. I was approached by the two curators who said, would I like to come here and act as observer of the workshops? They needed someone who would be a kind of reporter so that everyone would have an, a kind of overview of all the workshops, um, even if they were stuck in their own workshop and couldn't see what was happening. We came here to explore how the use of digital tools in design and in manufacture could potentially have a positive effect on modularization or modular building. I would call it a parametric design tool, basically. So based on a set of functional relationships, we are establishing a set of rules, let's say, for design. And based on these rules, how can they be converted into modules or modular way of thinking? I mean, we were anyway looking for something we can do only in this place, in the nature. We, don't, we didn't want to use computer or, or a massive machine. Or, and yeah, we wanted to learn from the earth. The Japanese team made a gathering space in outside because the workshop needs more meeting space in outside, we thought. It's wonderful. Some of the, some of the exhibitions were just uh, really, really engaging. I thought that was really nice, particularly this, this hole is so engaging that you as a person can sit in it and you can experience it. I think that's beautiful. Some things I wouldn't expect to be modular, particularly this, is okay, we hold our hands together, we make a module, but the idea of seeing nature in a different, different aspect because you're lowered down and then breaking things down to its components and modules in that way, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it was great to see all the, the different exhibition in the, in the castle. I think it worked really well all together and yeah, I I'm impressed by the amount of work that has been done in, in such a short time frame. The special experience, not only for us as curators of uh, Rethink the Modular, but also for our collaborators, I think was to develop the project further from the initial start with the master classes workshop in Babouche on to the exhibition and on further on with the book in 2016. Students working all over the world trying to make one project that looked like one individual made it with many inputs from all over the world through Skype and through lots of emailing. Uh, they were able to pull this all together. In Boisboucher we developed four uh, structures as uh, metaphors of what we learn from the observation of uh, trees. This installation is somehow uh, like a development and uh, a more like a synthesis of the ones we've been built in uh, Bois Boucher. We worked in really difficult conditions, I have to say, and, but we still, we're, we're still really involved and, uh, and motivated on that project and that was really great to work with them. I'm really proud of the results because I think subtly it still keeps the spirit of the project we did at Bois Boucher, however, it's developed very differently and a lot more abstraction happening. I think these eight years we used to just to research and just to, uh, and to research by doing, by experimenting, by prototyping, not only the uh, objects, but also imagining or thinking about, okay, if you have these objects, if you have this kind of platform, then what kind of spaces could this generate? What kind of... Um, Activities, especially that, what kind of activities could it generate? 
uh, and also what kind of rules and behaviors in between people and what kind of relations in between people could this generate. So the first step that we took on coming back from, from uh, Babuche, we spent quite some time, and you will see the sketches here, to work out the geometrical basics, yeah? So that what we postulated would be that connectivity or the connection zone, that that actually works. At first we saw the picture of this space. It's amazing to make uh, something such a beautiful place in Milano. But uh, on the other hand, I don't like to make something object which cannot uh, react to this space. So we are yeah, influenced from these pillars of this space. Yeah. And uh, somehow we wanted to participate mm. on this space. In Wabishi, we in the end presented as performers, so we were quite visible. We uh, used our instruments, but for the um, exhibition here, we chose that all the visitors should perform themselves. These are these five glasses that we created for all the events throughout the exhibition. We call it product performance. It really uh, forces you to communicate with other people. So, <clears throat> it's fascinating to see that there's so many different interpretations, what modularity could mean, yeah? And you're quite right in saying that what we did here is, I took it very literally. I saw it as an opportunity after after you know many years after I had left university and approach to buildings as the first thing that I ever did in architecture to revisit this. Revisit this with everything I had learned in between with you know seeing what had actually kind of influenced my thinking and really looking at where has it failed yeah because actually it seems to be such a clever idea even if you think about hello or whatever yeah you think that must be the solution but it's never really become the solution. Modularity is very much related to construction normally and in this exhibition we wanted to show <clears throat> the, the other side of that kind of thought. So imagination of uh, space is one thing that is a construction but only in your thinking. I believe even now we, we architects can expand our body sense through the project. So architecture, architect is not only to make a space which is comfortable or which can work for the function like a house or office and so on. I believe architect can continue to cultivate our body sense through the space, through the project. This is my strong uh, um, ambitions. Always we need to expand or shift our body, our body sense. When we were asked to rethink modularity, we uh, pretty soon realized that uh, um, modularity is not just about uh, repetition of standardized elements. When you talk about modularity, then you immediately involve the relationship between different elements, different scales, and also the relationship between uh, human scale and the, the scale of the architecture of the buildings. The powers of 10, Charles Eames, great influence on me as a designer as well. Very much so about looking at the fractal and looking at the whole and how these things accrete and build upon each other. And I think, I think we all see modularity when we look at furniture and architecture. And I think we don't understand its relationship to nature. And I think it has a lot to do with um, how things grow. I really can... Um, agree when someone says that trees are modular because there is always a geometrical or dimensional or structural relationship between uh, uh, one log and another or one part of the tree and another. Modularity is um, a sort of a method for multi scale. I think before modularity was a lot about um, physical things, you know, you like Lego for instance, you just build something with bricks, modular bricks that you can almost build whatever you want, but now it's also conceptual, for instance, with internet, with all you can build in 3D and with the new technology as well. 
and it goes more and more in the human, in the body, like in the biological uh, direction, I would say. So, yeah, like the brain ne neurons, for instance, they, they are modular in the way they build new connection depending on, on the need of them. So I think modularity goes more and more in that direction. It's not only a show of pieces put together, but also I think it's one step in a working process. Well, it's, well, some are more related, I think, to, to our project than others. I think what is very interesting is also to, that the curators have put the workshop results and the project within a, a wider context of, uh, and a wider history of modularity, trying to show a bit where what, what, has, what, was, what came before, what has been developed before, and how that is being translated into these projects or other projects that have been developed for the workshop. We added to the exhibition and to the master classes, uh, historical works, uh, works that are um, related to the content that are brought up by the master classes actually. I like this uh, contrast between uh, the moving and the silence, or very light and heavy. It's actually turning scales upside down, very small elements are blown up to be really huge structures and um, that is something we found in Fritz Haller's work as well and this is something which is very much it's nearly the nature of modularity as well so that's the reason why we connected this period of uh, design and architecture to the work of Fritz Haller and to uh, that exhibition as well. The exhibition was actually just the starting point to broaden the discussion about modularity and to reinvent it actually for the future. I might agree to the idea that this uh, exhibition has a kind of postmodern approach to the, to the theme of modularity. But I think this is also uh, maybe implicit in the nature of the ambition of the exhibition. So when you set the ambition which is rethink the modular, you sort of uh, naturally start to revise from, from, from scratch uh, the reason behind modularity. I would hope that we reached almost this end state of uh, research and that we might move towards uh, okay, how, this question of how could we now really uh, push it into reality? How could we maybe attract producers? How could we make it also attractive for uh, users? Uh, how could we make it attractive maybe for resellers and so on so that we could really, it could become uh, something that is really alive, that is no longer living in a laboratory but that is really living in society. The reason why we took, made this so, so realistic almost is I want to build this. I'm now looking for uh, collaborators, basically I'm looking for, for, for fabricators and, and, and contractors to develop this further. There is a massive shortage of affordable housing in London and one aspect of solving this housing problem is building cheaper and building more quickly in particular. So it, this is just the beginning of a journey I would hope.